Texas utility regulator ERCOT is refusing, refusing to retroactively fix the $16 billion that the state's grid operator erroneously overcharged power companies during last month's deadly storms. And clearly, if they overcharged the companies, that means that that cost is then transferred over to consumers, meaning the people of Texas who had to deal with and endure rolling blackouts during frigid temperatures. So here's what we know based on reporting from the Texas Tribune. Potomac Economics wrote in a letter last week to the PUC that ERCOT kept market prices for power too high for nearly two days after widespread outages ended late the night of February 17th. ERCOT should have reset the prices the next day, the letter said. And just so you guys remember, the way that the Texas power grid is run is separate from the power grid in the rest of the United States. It's privatized, it's deregulated, and more importantly, it's based on this notion of supply and demand, which is a disastrous situation when you have deregulated companies or deregulated power grid that doesn't see the need to have energy reserves in case there is a situation like what was experienced during the frigid temperatures during that storm. Now in Texas, wholesale prices are determined by supply and demand. When demand is high, ERCOT allows prices to go up. During the storm, PUC directed the grid operator to set wholesale power prices and $9,000 per megawatt hour, and that's the maximum price. And so they get this letter from the Potomac Economics people and they're saying, okay, you guys should make this adjustment so people aren't charged or overcharged for the power that they received. And the PUC chair, Arthur D'Andrea, who was elevated to chair this week by Governor Greg Abbott and PUC Commissioner Shelley Botkin, could have decided to order ERCOT to follow Potomac's economics recommendation, a move that potentially could have shaved billions of dollars off of what the grid operator overcharged power companies. But guess what, guys? They declined to do it, they said no. So DeAndrea declined to and noted that a retroactive decision would have winners and losers. You don't know who you're hurting and you think you're protecting the consumer and it turns out you're bankrupting someone else. Now, Liar. of course, there were no 100% a lie. And the reason why I say that is because first of all, usually when that talking point is used, it's a lie. But DeAndrea didn't even, try to give us a more hearty response or some detail into what was meant in that statement. Just saying like, we don't, we don't wanna pick winners and losers. Okay, but who are the winners, who are the losers? Can you, can you elaborate a little bit? And I do find it strange that no one has asked, right? It's just a superficial answer that means absolutely nothing. And no one is demanding details or asking a follow up. To DeAndrea regarding that answer. Okay, so uh, when we were discussing this story in the production meeting, both Anna and I couldn't believe that it was true. We're like, I don't know if we're gonna include it in the show. Let's read all the details and double check. Because really, they're, they're gonna just let $16 billion in extra charges stand after they killed some people in the middle of this crisis. And then they were at, didn't have any heat. And then they're gonna put that gigantic amount of money back onto the consumers and make them pay it for the failures of the energy companies. And the answer is yes, that's the current plan. So Texas Tribune covered it well, but they along with almost every other outlet keep calling these charges erroneous charges or a mistake. No, that's not true. This is how the system is designed. There's, it's not at all a mistake. The the it's a so-called free market model where if there is you know, not a lot of demand and a lot of supply, your prices will be low. But in crises like this where there's a lot of demand for heat in the middle of a winter storm and not enough supply once some of the lines freeze, well, you're gonna have gigantic bills that, you, that are due. It's not a mistake, that's how this system is designed. And now Greg Abbott, by putting this unbelievable liar into this position of authority just last week. So this is clear, he put in a stooge to lie to you guys, is basically saying, "Oh no, no, yeah, we're gonna keep your money. We killed some of you, 
We destroyed the whole state with our lack of planning called deregulation. And now we're gonna add on top insult to injury. We're gonna call it free market and make you pay an extra $16 billion. We didn't deliver for you. And on top of that, we're gonna say, oh yeah, pay more. So the yeah. pathetic excuse that this DeAndre guy has is that, well, look, there are winners and losers in this system. And, and earlier, people uh, might have paid less. I Presumably, he didn't even say that part, right? Uh, but now they're gonna have to pay, what, a $12,000 bill for one month of uh, electricity, a $16,000 bill. So winners and winners and losers. <laughs> he says it so flippantly, like you got $12,000 lying around after you survived the storm to get pay for one month's electricity bill. And and yeah. there are no, there is the, the the recommendation that Anna read to you was no of course they shouldn't have to pay that and there would be no losers from it other than your goddamn donors Greg Abbott that that would those would be the only quote unquote losers they already made a killing off of this they already screwed this up but Abbott says no 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 I, I they are going to rob you of every single dollar that they can. For God's sake, people and take journalists, so-called journalists in Texas, do your goddamn job, man. Tell people Greg Abbott is a crook and this DeAndre guy is a crook. This nonsense, you're really gonna let him pay those bills? You're really gonna let him pay those? If they try to make those pay, and God knows, maybe they'll say, hey, oh, it's related to the government. Maybe we could put you in jail if you don't pay those bills. That's the kind of sick corporate dogs run the state of Texas. Do journalism, point out the facts to people. If you let him pay those bills, it is an outrage beyond imagination. Yeah, you're right, Jenk, because um, I even mentioned erroneously, but it wasn't a mistake. This is the way the system does work in Texas. And essentially what the uh, group over at Potomac Economics um, argued was, hey, how about we end those uh, exorbitant charges on February 17th, as opposed to uh, keeping the charges going through February 19th, because um, the emergency alert was still taking place through the morning of February 19th. And that was five days after the storm had initially struck the state. But it was still on the market, the power grid was still unstable at that point, which is why people were still getting charged or the companies were getting charged that exorbitant amount, $9,000 per kilowatt hour. Um, so it is how the system works. Uh, but I, I really want to drive home the point that you were making there, Jenk, about how there actually are winners and losers. The losers are the people living in, in Texas. The winners are the private utilities, uh, the, pri- the private power companies uh, that get to base their pricing based on supply and demand. And remember, there was artificial scarcity there because these companies uh, refused to do the right thing because at the end of the day, they're companies that are looking out for their bottom line by ensuring that they had energy reserves for this type of situation. They did not have energy reserves. They didn't see the need to have energy reserves because that's an, in their minds, an unnecessary cost that they would rather do away with so they can increase their profits. And so certainly there are winners in this story. It's just not the people living in Texas, it's these private companies. Okay, when they say there's nothing we can do, it's it's beyond outrageous. Potomac Economics just delivered you a report on what you can do. You threw it in the trash can as a, oh, no, no, there's nothing we can do. They should add without costing our political donors money. And we're not willing to do that. We'd rather have you pay the $16 billion instead. Okay, so of course there's something, here's something you could do. Nobody's paying a bill above $300. That's it, the government can say that. Oh well, oh, but my beloved corporations can't rob you that way. That's right. That's the whole point. Of course, there's something you can do. Well, and then they would counter with, well, "Hey, Jenk, you know, supply and demand. Uh, you know, if you have low supply, of course the prices are going to be high, and the company should be rewarded for." Uh, pr- but wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. The only Anna's right. The only reason we have low supply, uh, low supply, is because of scarcity of resources. Why did we have scarcity? Because your pipes didn't work. Because you didn't take the precaution to put in measures that would have prevented it them freezing. They, you were warned a decade ago, ago to do that. Texas chose to not regulate you. They chose to let you basically ride 
and 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 not have those extra costs. So then it was your fault that we had low supply. Why the hell will the citizens of Texas pay for your mistake? That's insane, it's totally insane. And by the way, I'd like to note for the record that the whole press, and by partly us included, we were halfway, bit Keith Oberman and Michael Moore's heads off. Because they said, "Oh my God, they're making a hyperbolic comment about how the citizens of Texas would be affected about the vaccines." Now the citizens of Texas were killed, were not protected, lost heat, and now are being robbed of sixteen billion dollars. And I can't find anybody in the press outraged. Oh my God, it wasn't a tweet. It wasn't this. It wasn't that. It wasn't scandalous. It didn't involve sex. It didn't involve me being outraged at a progressive. So I can't tell. Oh yeah. I can. Oh, $16 billion, I don't know who the good guys and bad guys are. Well, then you suck as a journalist if you can't tell in this super obvious situation who the good guys and bad guys are. And if you don't tell them, they keep reelecting the bad guys who go, oh, these suckers, these idiots. I'm just gonna give all the money to my donors. Oh, why? Because the press never told you about the donors. They never told you that they're clear. They gave, we look, go to tyt.com, check stories. We have one investigative story after another, indisputable, all backed up by public records, showing you the millions of dollars that Republicans in Texas have gotten from those same energy companies that they just gave a $16 billion gift to. And whose pocket is it coming out of? The citizens of Texas, they're actually getting screwed. And I can't find outrage anywhere. They're too busy worrying about what Michael Moore said. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.